So when we talk about frog fishing, we're going to focus on really fishing the mats. So this, the mat is the hydrilla that's come up, it's topped out, and now it's growing across the surface. And when you look at it, uh, it literally, it, in real heavy spots, it looks like a, a field. It I looks mean, like it, a place you're going to get hung up. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is. But you're going to show us now. I'm going to show you how some yeah. baits and things that you can use to, uh, that you won't get hung up. The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and listening. We are in a, a new location today. We're on a, on a shoot uh, with Mr. Jason Holland again, and uh, we are at his uh man cave i guess you yeah call it. this is uh my place of peace yeah. yeah so he's got his all his fishing gear set up here where he ties his knots and makes his lures and dresses his boat and he's ready for the water you got it man this is where i it's funny because i'll actually come down here at night and you know most guys will go to their man cave or whatever i'll actually just come and sit on the boat and uh, just piddle yeah you know it's a, it's a great place to come and uh, of course having it all set up where i can get to it now it's not pretty don't get me wrong it's 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 beautifully disorganized, well, but I know exactly you know, where it's at. That's, that's all okay. That it's a garage, you know. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's your be. place. Um, you know, that, that's awesome that you can come sit in your boat and just, I mean, I'm sure after a day of fishing, uh, the bait is strung out everywhere. You know, you don't have everything in the right box. And I know I see frog here, which is what we're talking about today, frogging. Uh, but you got your boxes labeled. You got things in the, in the places you want it, and it's important to get it back. You it know? is. I, you know, it's, everybody's has their organization a little bit different. For me, if it's not an exact spot where I know where it's at, where, and we actually did some videos back, I don't want to say four or five months ago, talk about organization. So for me, for me to keep my mind in it and not get spun out, uh, I, I got to have everything in this spot. Some yeah. guys I go fishing with, man, they got stuff everywhere. Yeah. And they're, they're okay with it, and it works for them. Uh, for me, I want everything in a spot. I want everything to know exactly where it's at. And so I get back from a tournament or a day of fishing, I'll just pull it in here, kick a fan on during the summer, uh, turn on the radio, and just... Uh, you know, listen just, to Wildcats. Yeah, I, where I, can, I just geek out. I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I nerd out on fishing. I can't help it. That's uh, what I like to do. You go back and listen to all your fishing shows on Wildcast. I do. I turn and, myself on, <laughs> get intoxicated by the sound of my own voice. Yeah, that's oh, that's man. not weird at all no, for anybody no. listening. That's not weird. Oh man! Hey, before we get started today, I just want to it's, it's something we don't normally talk about very often. We don't tout very often, but is go follow this show. Uh, go check us out on iTunes or whatever your favorite podcasting platform is. Subscribe, like us uh follow us on youtube that's tennessee uh, wildlife resources agency on youtube on facebook twitter instagram all those places follow us there watch the show like us share us all the social media stuff so go yeah. out there and and and, and do that uh, click the bells click the likes and yeah hit all the subscribe button do everything and, and really it's it's so important and you said you're right we, we don't normally uh push this that very mm -hmm. that much but i think it's really important to talk about because Again, it's just that overall uh, compound multiplier. The more people that you that like it, share it, it begins to reach more. And hopefully, the whole point about everybody taking their time and effort, uh, especially from the state level, is mm -hmm. to try to educate, right? And that's the whole point. So the more we can get it out and hopefully educate, uh, you know, new anglers or anglers that's been around. At least, again, I'm selfishly talking about what I do right, on the fishing right. side. But the more that we can get that out, the more that we can get people involved with it, uh, learning it. Uh, TWRA becomes a resource, and that's ultimately uh, why you know why we're all here together, and that's becoming that information or educational resource. Sure. And for us to get that out, uh, we just need that uh, compound interest mentality where everybody's sharing it, liking it. So please, please go out and do that. Yeah. Help us out a little bit. If you like it, then other people probably will. Hopefully, you know. Hopefully. Uh, and again, if you don't like the fishing side, it's fine. You, you ain't got to follow whatever you see me. Just hit delete. But yeah. uh, hopefully, you can learn something out of it. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's uh, it's great. I want to do a shout out to Ethan. Ethan is a guy uh, that I know, and he uh, he uh, just recently found the show, and and uh, so that's awesome. So keep keep uh, watching and listening, Ethan. Thank you for uh, subscribing there on on uh, your podcast platform. Yeah, I had uh, a guy reach out that I knew from God, back in high school which i know is a long long time ago but uh that reached out just randomly uh through social uh through social media and said mm -hmm. hey i was listening to uh a show at twra and i heard your name are you the one that's doing the wildcast stuff he said we've been listening to it and he said just click who you were we've been enjoying it. and you know other people that enjoy the uh the sport of fishing uh, especially here in, in the home state has been sharing it so hey what we want you to do please get it out we yeah. love doing them 
hopefully you guys there enjoy listening and yeah those that watch for sure for sure well uh there's some interesting bait here behind us today you 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 told me you wanted to talk about frogging and or, or frog fishing and this is your favorite time of year it is uh so let's just jump in and, and talk about what we've got here and and some of these techniques and and uh, maybe this will become other people's favorite time of year yeah absolutely so it really starts when the grass starts to top out and when i talk about grass I, again, I'll try to. I try. I always talk about. I try to book into everything to kind of make a little bit more sense. When I talk grass, I'm talking about topped out uh, milfoil or hydrilla uh, in uh, some of our lakes, TVA lakes. That's going to be Nickajack. That's going to be Chick. Uh, Watts Bar has some now, uh, and of course, the the most famous in the country is Lake Gunnersville, which is just you know just south uh, over on the Alabama, North Alabama side. Mm-hmm. And so, when we talk about frog fishing, we're going to focus on really fishing the mats. So this, the mat is the hydrilla has come up, it's topped out, and now it's growing across the surface. And when you look at it, uh, it literally, it, in real heavy spots, it looks like a, a field. It I looks mean, like it, a place you're going to get hung up. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is. But you're going to show us now. I'm going to show you how some yeah. baits and things that you can use that, that you won't get hung up. But uh, we're going to talk about that. Now, the other piece, and I'll, I'll just drop it in when it comes to frog fishing, uh, and really what we're talking about, it's just a hollow-bodied uh, frog. Okay. All right, and so very weedless, um, and we'll kind of go into the bait a little bit, but this is really what we're talking about when we say frog fishing. So make sure to clarify we're not throwing live frogs. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, if you're listening, it's like a hollow plastic tube uh, that's painted up, looks like a frog, and it's got a couple of uh, uh, trailers on it that, that look like legs. And Yeah. Uh, these are all pretty much primarily throw spro. Uh, quite a few companies make them. Strike King makes them. Jackal makes them. There's a lot of companies that make a hollow-bodied frog. Uh-huh. Uh, spro really was the first one to come out with it. Two I'm a big fan of. That's mo- my box is mostly uh, spro frogs. But... The other way, we're going to talk today, for our conversation's sake, about fishing the mats uh, on top of the water. Now, okay. the other way you can fish a hollow body frog is uh, you can throw it anywhere where it's super gnarly, where you can't really throw anything else. You got to throw something extremely weedless, or what really works great on Old Hickory, especially summertime as the limbs and um, trees begin to grow over the water. What it happens is it creates a massive shade pocket underneath those limbs. Mm-hmm. And so take a frog, skip it up underneath there, try to get underneath there as deep as you can. Uh, again, it's open water, but a hollow body frog works great because, again, if you hit the limb, you hit the ble- the, the leaves, whatever, because it's so weedless, you're not going to have hang-up issues. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, a lot of guys will take them and skip them up underneath uh, those type of overhangs. That's one way to fish them. We're not going to focus on that so much today. Today we're going to talk about fishing the grass with it these float right they do they are absolutely uh buoyant now we'll talk about a couple ways that you can modify them Mm -hmm. um but straight out of the package they have these long uh they're silicone legs right uh, and kind of like what's on a uh a a spinnerbait or something like that you got it you got it's exactly the same type of skirting and they'll match the color to the actual color of the bait i've Mm -hmm. got uh, they make every color imaginable just for simplicity's sake guys stick with the black stick with the white and then stick with the natural color. Okay. Um, green pumpkin, uh, bluegill, uh, you know, gray, grayish uh, bluegill color. Uh, you can even do kind of a dark red. And all you're doing, again, is you're just trying to mimic whatever the bass are feeding on. Okay. Another great tip. In the mornings, when I first started frog fishing, I'm like, okay, it's morning. Uh, it's still overcast, still kind of dark. I want to throw a color that they can see. Well, where I was missing the boat is I need to throw a color that they actually can profile. Meaning, if you take a white bait when it's just breaking morning and you've got it on the water, bass can actually see a darker color profile better than they actually can see the white color. So, just quick, easy tip. Uh-huh. When it's darker, throw a dark color. When it's brighter, throw a brighter color. Okay. Uh, great little tip. Took me a long time to figure that out, and it it works. That worked across the board on a lot of different things. It really does. Okay. And so get dark, uh, dirty water. Now we're going to jump way off subject, but yeah. real quick, dirty water. So if I'm fishing a jig and it's just been a pouring down rain and it's nasty, mudded mm-hmm. out, I used to think, hey, I need to throw a bright color, mm-hmm. right? So I need can to see throw. it. Exactly. You actually will see it less in dirtier water. What you do is you throw a darker color, black and blue or a June bug or something that's dark because it profiles better in dirty water. Okay. So when you hear a lot of guys say, hey, dirty water, throw a dark color. That's exactly why. It's profile. So, uh, going back to the hollow body frogs, we're going to talk about throwing them on the matted out, <clears throat> excuse me, matted out vegetation, dick jack or chick. Mm-hmm. There's really a, a couple, three things to focus on. Uh, one is going to be size of your frog. One's going to be color. And then the other piece is, 
this really only uh, comes into play when you're fishing the type of mats is how much indentation is that frog going to make on the mat. Now, I'll, I'll explain that okay. as we kind of go through that process, but that's really the three things we're going to focus on today. Sure. We'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, additions you can, or modifications, probably a better word, that you can do to a hollow bodied frog. So let's talk about gear first. Well, you know, right rod, right reel, right line. Uh, oh, thanks, right here. Yeah, this is perfect. So this is actually a uh, cash in fishing rods. This is the Icon series, their latest and greatest series. Uh, carbon fiber, extremely light. Made in the USA. Made in North Carolina. The only only rod uh, manufacturers actually made all right here. We've covered this in a show before, but great great quality rods with the the handles and things that. Uh, contour your hands and it's good grip and all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's so. absolutely it's awesome. It's actually Kevlar grips. Uh, extremely durable. We all know familiar yeah. Kevlar. Yeah. You're an outdoorsman, you know the word Kevlar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but huge fan of cash and fishing rods. Uh, this is their frog series. And so uh, this specific rod is a 7.4. So you can throw, you want to throw, you can throw a seven footer. Again, guys, context this is fishing the grass mats at a Nick or a Chick. So let's keep that in mind. Nick and Chick. I Nick like and that. Chick, yeah. Uh, you could. <laughs> There's a whole other conversation, but uh, this is kind of to try to bookend it. Mm -hmm. When you're fishing that, you want a longer rod. So you can throw a 7-footer. My personal is 7-4, seven, 7-6, seven, 7-8, seven, uh, even all the way up to 7-10. Mm. Uh, that gets a little bit long. Uh, personally, that's 7-4 to 7-6 is where I like to stay. Okay. You want a heavy, powered rod. Again, we're going to be dragging these things out of the slop. Big ones, too. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> I'm always shooting for big ones. Yeah. I don't care. actually. I don't really care if it bites it and I can drag it in. I mean, I'd rather have a five pounder, but yeah, dude, I'll catch a million two pounders. I don't oh care. yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's all the way. It's, it's I, I love the catching aspect of just about anything that swims. Mm -hmm. But heavy power, uh, and you want a fast action. So which means you don't want uh, at the end of that rod, you don't want it to be like a telephone pole with no give whatsoever. You want it. Uh, you want that action. So when you set the hook, it can drive that home. Uh, and a parabolic bin will help you do that. So, yeah. cash and fishing rods. This is the frog icon frog series. It actually even says frog on it. Oh yeah, there you go. So for guys like me that need it spelled out, very simplistic, they do that. So uh, easy to find if you hit their website. You can probably just type it in icon frog or icon. It'll pull up. You, you got it. You got it. Mm -hmm. You just go to catch and fishing rods and it says icon series. You click it. They're all right there. Yeah, super easy. Uh, they do a great job with it. So real. Uh, you guys, everybody that's watched any of these, I'm a big fan of Lou's. Mm -hmm. I'm not sponsored by them. I, I pay retail just like everybody else. So, this is what you like. Yeah. That's what I like to do. Could I run some other reels? Probably, but Lou's is where, uh, what I like to use, and uh, I pay for them just like everybody else. So yeah. when, I, when I'm advertising, I'm not advertising because they're giving me a check. Lou's, uh, what you do want to get is two things. One, you want a higher gear ratio reel, right? That's just going to help you pick up line. It's going to help you keep that, uh, keep that frog moving across the mat. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to work so hard. Okay. Because uh, this is, I mean, this is tough fishing. I mean, it is full contact fishing, which is a blast. But you, it will get wore out. So get a higher gear ratio. A lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of casting, a lot of retrieving. Man, it is. Because you're all not, it's it's all day long. You're making bomb casts. Because, again, these mats will be, they literally and legitimately, they can be miles long. Mm -hmm. They could be three football fields deep and far as you can see. I mean, these are massive grass flats on these lakes. So, you got to cover water, and once you find them, then you can kind of pick it apart and pull them all out. But you're going to—it's bomb casting and your work. You're, you're chopping, and we'll kind of talk about how to work it. But okay. gear ratio reel, uh, high gear gear ratio reel, and this is actually called the Super Duty. Again, this is full contact bass fishing. You want something that's got a little bit more, a uh, little bit more higher, uh, bigger gears, uh, tighter drags. I think this drag goes up to I think like 20 pounds, which is really really tight drag. So make sure you got the right gear. You can do it with other stuff. So you got, go do it. But this gets you in the weeds a little bit more. So that's the one you need for yep. full contact full, frogging. Full contact frog. This should be the name of the show. <laughs> okay, I like that. Uh, last thing and right here is you need braided line. I'm a suffix 832 kind of guy. Uh, this is 65 pound test. Uh, you can do 50 to 65. Wow, 65. You can, get, you can go up to 80. Uh, for me, 65 is a really good number. You can do a lot of stuff with it. So 65 pound. You need braid. If you're frogging. You need braid. Okay. We'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll get time to go into why. Just do just, it. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, you'll be very happy if you do. All like right, you so, said, full contact. So you got to have something a little stronger. Yeah, you got to have something. Because, again, you're gonna, when they bite it, they're going to come up through, grab it, and they're going to go straight back down. Yeah, they're kind of taking so, that home. Yeah, you're going to set the hook as hard as you can. And now you got to remember, you've got, uh, give or take, 12 to 18 inches of solid matted out grass 
that and you're going to have to drag him from uh, 30 yards, maybe 35, 40 yards in the grass. So you, I mean, it's it's a blast. Mm-hmm. Go give me your all, but yeah. you, I mean, you're going to be you're going to be hitting him pretty hard, and and it's going to take a lot of uh, strong gear. Gotcha. Make it easier to get him out. Yeah. All right, let's talk frogs. Okay. We're good on time. Yeah, we got plenty. Of time. Okay, good. Frogs, you got really three different types. Um, you've got the uh, Reggie the Frog, uh, and I will show this one now. That this is, a, if you're watching this, this is a very bright yellow frog. Yeah, chartreuse, sparkle. Yeah, I don't really throw this one very <laughs> often, but it shows up very nice. That's on what camera. your daughter would want to throw. Yes, she will take this on her, uh, on her Barbie pole, the sparkly <laughs> one. Uh, yeah, that's what she'll do. Yeah. But uh, I'm using it just just so it'll show up better. But uh, this is just a normal. Uh, I think it's a four inch uh, long, and it has the uh, about three inch tails on it. Mm-hmm. This is the uh, just a normal hollow body frog. Then you have uh, the same body length, but this is if you can see it, this is a popping version. So, oh yeah, like a pop art kind of. You got it. It's it's the same, similar. It's got that cup mouth, and as you pull it, it's just going to spit water. Um, works for different scenarios. We'll kind of hit well, on that. Well, that particular one is that dark color you talked about earlier, too. You got it. So this is, uh, I call it the Red Devil. I, I have Oh, wait, red? You're always yeah, on red. Yeah, imagine, <laughs> imagine that. If you watch the other shows, you'll catch the red joke. Red hooks, red baits. Yeah, I like red. But uh, it's called the Red Devil. I really don't know what the color, the name of it is, but it's a pretty popular one. And then, uh, you know, I've got, uh, they make black and yellow, which is a big favorite of mine. This big one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So got those. And then you've got, um, you know, solid color. Solid colored frogs. Yeah. Anyway. The next size is, this is called the King Daddy. Yeah. Uh, it is a five-inch bait, and it is massive. But what you got to think about, as it gets later in the year, uh, those gizzard shad will get up underneath. And that's why the bass are there. The gizzard shad are schooled up underneath these grass mats. It's cool. You know, super hot outside. Sun's beating down. They get up underneath that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the bass go there because all the shad go there. All the bait goes there. The bluegill, gizzard shad. So, yes, it looks big to you and I. But if you think about these bass are eating uh, gizzard shad that are seven, eight, ten inches long. Yeah. I mean, this is just a this is just a small meal. It's appetizer. For them. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> don't be afraid to throw big baits. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I guess, another tip. A bigger bait's going to produce a bigger fish most it of the is. time if they're there. Yeah. Yeah. You may not get as many bites, but if you're trying to get the biggest fish in an area, typically a bigger bait. I'm not saying you can't catch a big one on a small frog. Sure. Uh, sure. I caught the biggest uh, bass on a frog on old hickory with the miniature. The mini little popping frog. This one right here, maybe. That's a small That's one. That's exactly right. That thing's about two inches long. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was pushing seven and a quarter, seven and a half, give or take. Uh, for old hickory, that's a massive fish, and I caught him on a little bitty frog. So mm-hmm. don't think I have to only throw big baits, but generally speaking, a big bait will get you bit. Sure. All right. So that is the frogs. Now let's talk about a couple modifications that you can make. Okay. Uh, and this one is really probably the most important is. What we talked about uh, earlier in the show is the indentation on the grass mat. So you got you got to picture a grass mat is just imagine bunches of football fields, mm-hmm. and you've got just a massive area underneath them. And so you're throwing a bait on top of it. Well, you got to get the bass's attention, right? So all you're trying to do is you're trying to call or bring him in to area where your specific bait is. He could be out there roaming around. You want he wants to hear sound. He wants to see. Uh, and again, you're tapping into all those senses, and so a great way to do that is uh, typically a hollow body frog is very light. Right. Uh, I mean, it's uh, I don't know exactly. I'm going to say maybe a half ounce, mm-hmm. give or take. So what you do is they they come with actually weights on the bottom. So if anybody has one, you look there is a molded weight into the very bottom. Of oh, it. I see that. Yeah, on the backside. Yep, on the backside. And so what that does is it allows it to sit with its backside more in the water, like kind of like a frog would sit. You got it. Well, there you go. Yeah, imagine that, huh? <laughs> and so what you're trying to do now is it, it, it because it's so light and that grass is so thick. When you throw it without putting anything in it, it just sits on the top. Uh huh. And you can work it a co- and you can make a little commotion. But really, where you amp up your game is you get this frog heavier, so it actually sinks into the mat. And so what happens is as you're working that, and so just be back up how you work this. You're going to work it much like a jerk bait. Is okay. a great way to explain it. So. You're going to take it, and you're going to pop it. Uh, personally, I take it, and I kind of pop it straight down. And so it makes this kind of uh, – the, the frog pushes. All mm-hmm. right? And it's the best way to explain it. Similar to a spook? Would you throw a spook the same way? Yeah. The spook's a little bit different because you're, you're going to be popping it pretty fast just to make that walk. But yeah. the same concept is you're looking at um, – you want to try to get that frog to move as much weight – uh, excuse me, move as much of the grass and make commotion, and the weight will help you. Okay. And so you're just kind of snapping it down. You can work it fast, slow, 
million ways you can work it. Okay. Just try it. But awesome. where I'm going with it is, is that uh, I use this right here. And this is just plain old BBs. Daisy. They, actually, they are Daisy. <laughs> uh, I went to Walmart and picked up, I think, a million of them for 16 cents or something. Yeah. I don't know what it was. It's, they're not expensive. But what I do is take a hollow body frog. Let me get one here. It's going to show up a little bit better. A uh, bigger one. Here we go. And if you look on this frog where the hooks actually come out uh -huh. of the plastic body, you can take it and squeeze it. All right? uh -huh. And by squeezing it, it just kind of opens up that spot where the hooks come out. Mm -hmm. And then I just take... I usually start with about six BBs, and I'll take it and I'll throw it on the grass mat and kind of work it. Now, if it doesn't move enough, I'll put four or five more. Yeah. And just keep doing that until I get it heavy enough that as I'm working it, you will, you'll instantly know from where you worked it, you kind of see a little trail. And once you get it weighted, it, I mean, it, it blazes the trail. Right. right? And it's, I don't want to say cutting it, but it's, it's pushing that grass out so you have a very defined line. Extremely helpful for the bass when they're trying to key on it. Because what think about it, you're think about it, if you're underneath and you look up and it's just this big wall, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you see the light this this um, trail that's a little bit lighter with the grass parted. So again, giving the ability to visually see it. The other great thing about BBs is now you got all those BBs hitting each other. Now they're rattling. Well, I was going to wonder because it's a rubber body or a silicone body or whatever it is that it, it probably wouldn't have as much rattle. But if they're hitting each other, the BBs are hitting each other. You get a little bit of you got noise. It. You, you get a little. Uh, I don't think I have one in here. Well, I, you probably can't hear it. Uh, you can, you hear, can hear, it. hear it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so it gives it that sound. And so now we're, we're, we're helping them find it, right? So visually they can see it better. We're putting some sound in it. And so then the next piece is kind of we talked about earlier is the size profile. So when I go fishing, I will start with the, the normal size, right? That's going to be my starting point. Mm -hmm. I'll work that for pick a time frame. If that doesn't get me bit. I'll change. I'll either go bigger. I'll go smaller. Uh, I'll change up color. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to go out and spend a million dollars worth of Spro Frogs. Go get. You, you literally could spend about 30 or 40 bucks. Or what I've done, I mean, this box here, I, I've been working on this box for 12, 15 years. Yeah. So, again, they, they last a long time. They're not going to break down. They're not. Uh, keep them dry. I mean, they're, they're, they're metal hooks. Yeah. If, if you, what I like to do, if I get done with the day of fishing, I will take everything. I cut them off, and I'll either throw it on a workbench or I'll throw it uh, in between the seats or something and let them dry out, come back the next day, and put them all back in the box. That's that time in the man cave sitting you here got it. putting it, it back. Yeah, it's a great way because you give yourself a much better chance of not uh, rusting out your hooks. Now, uh, they make a lot of different – Plano makes a great box that has some water wicking um, uh, cartridges that go in that. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do. Uh, a couple other companies make them where it, you know helps them not rust, but just be smart about it. Take yeah. a soaking wet bait and throw it in a box with a bunch of other metal hooks. Yeah, even uh, do you get water in them? You do. Okay, you do. So uh, it's actually uh, we wind up making game out of it, of course. Uh, so if myself and another fishing partner, uh, after about two or three casts, um, I just as I'm going in, I'll grab it real quick and just kind of. Squeeze, squeeze it. it. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to do it when someone's not looking in the back of their neck or under <laughs> foot or something to make them jump. But anyway, uh, yeah. So they, they will get a little bit of water, um, and that really depends. If you're letting it, you're throwing out and looking it really slow and letting it sit in some more open water. Yeah, it's you will have a chance to pick up more water. Okay. If you're working it pretty crap for pretty fast across the grass mat, you will, mm -hmm. but not at the same rate. Uh, now, by modifying it with the BBs and sinking, just the nature of it will make it get more water in it. Yeah. Straight out of the package, they do really, really well. If you do some modifications to it, then, yeah, it's it's going to sink, and you're going to pick up more water. Well, that um, weight back there, you know, it kind of keeps it keeps it down where that hole is kind of letting it flow out a little bit too, maybe. You got it. It, it helps just, again, they, they design a really good product. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they're not cheap. They're about 10 to 12 bucks a piece. Um, but, again, I've got frogs in here that I've had legitimately for years and years and years. Yeah. So, uh, a last little quick um, uh, addition, I guess, or mm -hmm. modification is a company called Lake Fork. They make a kind of a trailer hook designed for hollow body frogs. Okay. Uh, I will tell you this. Do not use this if you're fishing the grass mat. Uh, the real thick stuff because you'll you'll keep it hung up the whole time. Okay. Uh, where this is really great, we talked about earlier, when you skip them underneath um, – uh, logs and over, or excuse me, not logs, but the overhanging branches. Trailer hook is good if they're just kind of slapping at it uh, and not really committing. Uh, trailer hook will help you pick up a couple. Don't use it a ton, but uh, it is available, and so whether you can modify them a little bit. Now, got, if we got a couple extra minutes, I will give you another quick modification. Okay. 
that uh, can get you in the weeds. Now, we don't have time to go too into it much. You can go to YouTube. There's some videos out there. You actually can swap out these rubber skirts uh-huh. for blades. Yeah. For like a little uh, willow leaf blade. A little spinnerbait. Kind of like a spinnerbait, but yeah, just the, the much smaller, smaller version. Uh, won't have time to go in. But again, those are great open water tips and tricks that you can do if you're skipping them up underneath. So how do they, they screw in or something? No, you actually uh, you run some braided line. Okay. Uh, you, run, you run through that backside hole, come through here. Uh, and you'll kind of make a loop, tie on your two uh, uh, your two willow leaf blades, and then you pull it and you tie it real tight to this bottom. Awesome. Here. Okay. Cool. Uh, great video to go out on YouTube. Check it out. And that's uh, again, th- this is strictly for the open water side. But for grass mat fi- grass mat fishing, you want to take it out of the package, throw a couple BBs in it, and just start slinging it. All right. Let me stump you a little bit. Okay. Uh, take one of these. Would it work well on a creek or other types of fishing? Does it have to be a grass mat or, or throwing it under trees and stuff? Absolutely not. They work great. Uh, so, for instance, if you got them in uh, schooling, all uh-huh. right, we call them in the jumps. Um, the fall time when they all kind of school up and they start busting shad, and you'll see it uh, across the surface and they're hitting. Frogs are great to throw out there. Okay. Um, uh, they work great uh, for we talked about casting underneath limbs they right. work great for open water uh the frog kid the bass don't know it's a frog we call it a frog mm-hmm. right and so if you get a a bluegill colored and what's great about these you actually can work them like your work uh like a spook like okay. a walk the dog so if you're wor- you're working at top water yeah just make it that front will just walk the dog it's great if you get a location that has a lot of grass underneath so the, the grass is grown up and let's just say it's uh, you know, six inches to eight inches below the surface, a hollow body frog is great when you've got some open water areas mm-hmm. and you've got grass. And what it makes it, what's great is because you can fish a spook, absolutely fish a spook across it. But what happens with you have a treble type bait, when the fish comes up, grabs it, he's going to go straight back to the grass. Mm-hmm. And so now, even though the grass is underneath, you still have got all of these opportunities with those treble hooks to grab the grass. So when you take a hollow body frog, when he bites it, Right? He doesn't have those treble hooks to get you because he's going to die back into the grass. You're not having to fight and worry about your trebles of your spook getting stuck in there. So they're extremely versatile. Mm-hmm. We call them frogs. That's what the market is of frogs, but uh, they can they can mimic just about anything you wanted to. So awesome. Great product. Have fun. Yeah. Experiment great. with them. Great uh, tips. So hopefully you learn something out of it. Uh, a couple quick things. One, don't forget the three main things. It's your faith, your family, and your fishing. We all live by that rule. Uh, it's extremely important to us. Second, Thank you. Thank you for you, You're Mr. Welcome. Don, who's not here today. Uh, our guy in the back, Todd, making us all look pretty and yeah. sound good. Uh, thanks, you guys, for having me. Love doing these. Awesome. And uh, the third thing is come check me out on Facebook, Instagram. At Jason YouTube. Holland. Jason Holland Fishing. Yeah, Jason check Holland it out. Fishing. Love to check you. Uh, love to have you come in, communicate with us, and share some more tips with you. Yeah. Well, let me thank you for being on. Absolutely. Uh, we love having you. Uh, it's a lot of good information, a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Always a good time. Uh, so keep coming back Uh, we're gonna have more of these for you and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button don't forget to uh, you know like us on facebook and all that fun stuff and uh, thank you to our radio partners out there for uh, for tuning in across the state so awesome we'll see you next time do it again on tennessee wildcast thanks for tuning in stay connected with twra by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on facebook twitter and instagram Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.